Hi everyone, in this video today, I will explain to you what is residual analysis. So residual analysis, what is the purpose of residual analysis? The purpose or the main purpose of residual analysis is to detect what is called outliers. Outliers are data which is not belong to the data to the data set because it has certain characteristic which is not normal if compared to other values. So when we talk about residuals, it is actually the observed error or it is the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. From these residuals, we have to calculate the standard residuals. So what is the formula of to calculate standard res residuals? So the formula is residuals divided by the standard deviations of the residuals. So the purpose of converting to standard residual is because we want to convert the value into a Z distribution. And how far and how do we know that it is an outlier? So from the standard deviations, oh sorry, sorry, from the standard residuals, we will know how far the residuals deviate from its mean. So the mean is zero. So in the units of standard deviations, meaning that we're going to have negative one, negative two, negative three, zero, one, two, three, and so on. So how far the residual deviate from zero? So the rule of thumb is, to detect an outlier, if the residual is more than 3 or more than negative 3 and above, it is considered outliers. Okay? So let me show you how to use Microsoft Excel to look for, to do residual analysis. So what do I have here is the same data set which I used in my previous video on trendline and scatter plot. So over here I have uh, the sales of durian, the amount and the income of every customer which I've recorded and I have a total of 30 observations. So I am using the same data from the last video. So here there is a sale and income. And you should know by this by this time that sales is the dependent variable and the income is the independent variable. So how do we calculate the residuals? So go to data analysis. Click on data analysis. And we will look for regression. So over here, in the regression box, we need to key in our input so for the Y range and for the X range. And the Y range represents our dependent variable. So we will have to select our range for the dependent variable. And for X range, so we have our independent variable, which is income as our independent variable, and it should be in the uh, X range. Okay, I click on labels because I want to include both the label sales and income, and the confidence interval is 95%, is standard. Output range, where should I have my output in the worksheet? Okay, let me put it here. It doesn't matter, you can have it anywhere. Okay, the residuals box, click on residuals. Click on standard residuals and take the residual plot. Okay, other than that, just leave it blank and press OK. So 
So I already have here the output for my regression. So the data which we need to focus is on here, the residual output. Okay, let me enlarge it a bit. So we have here a column for predicted sales, residuals, and standard residuals. Okay, I will transfer this residual output to another worksheet so you can see the actual sales at the side of the predicted sale. So this is the actual sale that I have in my data set. I will put this column next to this column. Okay. So here, over here, I have my observations from 1 to 30. I have my actual sales or observed data. This is my predicted sales. This is residual and this is standard residual. If you notice that how do I get this residual? This actually the actual sales minus the predicted sales. Okay, let's try. Actual sales minus predicted sales. There you go, you will get the residual. And for observation number two, for example. Actual sales minus predicted sale, you will also get 2.92 and so on. Okay, so next, we need to get the standard residual. So, how do I obtain this standard residual? So, you have to use the formula of residuals. Residual divide by the standard deviation of the residuals. Remember that. Okay, let's try. First, we need to look for the standard deviation of the residual. So, I hope you can recall back how to find standard deviation. STD, DEF. Standard deviation of a sample. So I'll select this, all the values of the residuals here. Okay, press enter. So the standard deviation of my residuals is 33.47. So now let's see how can we got this value. Again, residual divided by standard residual. Residual, let's say uh, observation number one, divided by the standard deviation. So negative 0 0.41. So this value and this value is the same value. So this is how you obtain your standard residual by using the example of, by using the formula of residual divided by standard residual standard deviations of the residual so now we want to use the standard residual here to see whether we have any outliers so how do we do that we have to check the standard residuals one by one if the value is plus or minus 3 is the, it is considered as an outlier. So outlier must be removed here yeah? because when we say outlier, we can say that a particular data does not actually belong to this data set. So that is one use of residual analysis which is to detect an outlier. So do I have an outlier here? 
let me go through one by one. Ah, it's going to be one. Negative three, but it should be more than negative three. So this is one potential outlier here. Okay, remember, residuals, which is plus and minus 3, is considered as an outlier. Okay, next, we want to check on the assumptions of linearity. Okay, how do we know that the relationship between the variables or the relationship between independent and uh, dependent variables is linear. One way to check it is by looking at the scatter plot. And the other way to check it, the assumption of linearity is to look at the residual plot. Okay. So I have taught you how, how to, to, to create a trend line and a scatter plot. So here, by looking at the scatter plot here, we can say that the relationship between sales and income is actually linear because it has a straight line relationship. Second, we look at the residual plot. How to get the residual plot? Because uh, we have done that earlier. So this is the output. Okay, so this is the in residual plot which I've generated from the regression output. So, if you look at the residual plot, you can see, you can actually see that almost all the values are scattered around zero. Okay, so you cannot see any uh, specific pattern like a U-shape or A-shape or something like a uh, curve uh, or bias to the right or bias to the left. Over here, you can see that most of the data is scattered around zero. So that is how you analyze linearity using residual plot. Okay, I think that is all for today. So please try the exercises that I've given you or the tutorials that I've given you in the Google Classroom. Okay, thank you very much.